Hi everyone, it's Evangeline here at eTrailer and today we're going to be taking a look at our Saris Door County 2 bike platform rack for your electric bikes right here on our 2015 Toyota 4Runner. Now I call this the elevator bike rack because it's an electric lift bike rack so it raises and it lowers. When you want to mount your bikes, you just lower it down and when you're ready to go, raise it right back up and then you're ready to drive. So it's a very unique bike rack, definitely ideal for if you have your heavy electric bikes and you're not able to lift it up onto your vehicle. So we're going to take a look at this specific bike rack on our 4Runner just to take a look at the different unique challenges we have with this vehicle. Now let's take a look at the main event of this bike rack which is to activate the elevator lift. So we have our keys right here. We're just going to pop those in in order to turn our lift on. So we have our buttons that lit up here. So we have up, pause, and down. If you have a vehicle with a shorter hitch or lower to the ground, you may need to use the pause button. For our 4Runner, we can just let it go all the way down. Notice how long it takes though for it to lower. So it's very slow lift and lowering. It also has a warning beep as it's in motion just to let you know that it's not ready to drive away with. So it finally stopped in the completely lowered position. It's gonna continue to beep showing or kind of telling you that it's still in the lowered position because you really shouldn't drive away with it in here. So what this uses is a seven pole wiring system, or I guess you would call it the seven way. Now see how far this fits. This is pretty much as far as our wiring harness goes on our bike rack, but notice where our forerunner's wiring bracket is all the way over here. So because of that, I actually had to use a separate seven-way extension. Definitely something worth considering if you have a forerunner because you will need to find some kind of way to adapt to that difference in terms of where your wiring harness is on your bike rack and where your wiring bracket is on your forerunner. So with your 4Runner, you have some different options when it comes to adapting to how your wiring harness is placed on your vehicle. What I did is I got the torque lift extension. This is a seven way extension designed for special torque lift hitches. Because of that, it's on the pricier end because of its unique application. So definitely not something worth it if you're just using it for this bike rack. So some other options you have is if you are mechanically inclined, you could just use pretty much any seven way extension. Those are usually four to eight feet long and just make it or adjust it for yourself where it fits perfectly between your bike rack and your vehicle. So we're gonna take a look at the next feature, which is that this bike rack can tilt away. To do so, we have a lock as well as a lever. So press and turn this lock, so that's now unlocked. And then support your bikes, because this will drop down quickly if unsupported. Step on this lever and just let that drop down. And you'll want to do that if you wanna access your hatch. So as you can see here on our 4Runner, there is plenty of clearance between our door and our mast, allowing us to open our hatch, get in our trunk, grab whatever we need. So if we need our bags, our coolers, our helmets, we can get them without having to take our bikes off. So you just lift this back up and it snaps into place. Don't forget to lock it so that you know it's completely secured. Now that can be kind of difficult since it can be on the heavier side, especially if you, if you have it loaded with two bikes or your two electric bikes. So definitely something to keep in mind if you want to tilt it away. This has a weight capacity of 60 pounds per bike. So whether you're carrying one bike or two bikes, you're still limited to the 60 pounds each bike capacity. So if you do have your extra heavy electric bikes, please be mindful of that. I know some of the heavier bikes can go over that weight capacity. Also, weight them with the battery off because if you have electric bikes, even if you have any other bike rack, please take that battery off as you travel just because that road vibration and road stress is not good for the battery life. You have two different levers here. You have this large lever which acts as your ratcheting mechanism to tighten your wheel down and then you have this release lever. So you're going to pull that release lever and that will allow you to push that strap up and then out of the way. With your straps out of the way from your wheels, now hold on to your bike with one hand or with some way somehow, and then disengage the strap on the frame mount. 
Now just swing this down and out of the way. And then we can now roll our bike off. And with the bike off, we can take a closer look at the bike rack itself. I have it back into the lifted position just so that it's not beeping anymore. And taking a look here at our cradles. So we have what are basically trays. They're angled downwards and they have a wheelbase capacity of 48 inches. Now, depending on where you have your bike though, you're gonna have to arrange them around where that frame mount is. So it may be tilted towards one side, but still a good enough capacity. Because your bike will be moving back and forth on the tray, we have these wheel straps which can be adjusted to wherever your wheels are. They tighten down and ratchet down around them. Now this has a tire width maximum capacity of up to three inches. So if you have your extreme fat bike, tires probably not gonna be the best fit, but three inches is your regular tire width for fat bikes. The two frame mounts are for your two bikes. Notice how you have a shorter mount and a longer mount. Now it's gonna take a little bit of practice just to get them lined up with your bikes. I know of bikes of different shapes and sizes with different frames can get a little tricky. So it's nice to know that you can roll them back and forth and these can go up and down just to find the best fit for you. Now with anything attached to your hitch, it's gonna add some length to the back of your foreigner. Now this adds a fair amount of length because of that distance between your shank and your mast. So we're gonna take some measurements just to see exactly how much. Measuring from our bumper right over here to the end of the bike rack, which is by this foot lever, it sits at about 37 inch added to the back of our foreigner. Definitely a good amount of length. Something to keep in mind, whenever you're backing into your garage or trying to park into a really tight spot, please don't forget that you have both bikes as well as a bike rack behind you. In our case here, since the forerunner already takes up a good amount of space, if you have a teeny tiny garage, that measurement should come in handy. Now let's take a look at ground clearance. So this is gonna be the position your bike rack is when you're ready to drive away with the bikes on there. So measuring from underneath the wheels to the ground, it sits at about 17 inches of ground clearance. Let's compare that to this measurement from the shank to the ground, which is gonna be about 18 inches. So you have that slight shank rise. It dips down right over here where your hinges. That's 16 and a quarter inches. Of course, please make sure that if you do, are, if you are using an adapter like what I have here, just to find a better place for that wiring. I let it hang right now since we aren't gonna drive away just yet, but definitely something to be mindful. You may have to cable tie or mount it over to where your tow bar is. Now we also have these taillights on the end of the Door County, which is useful if you have this on the road with your bikes on it. it. Let's people know how far back your bike rack sits, even though your taillights are also visible on the Forerunner, even with your bikes on, still a nice helpful feature just to keep you safer on the road. But for my thoughts on the Door County itself for the Forerunner, if you can figure out a way to connect your actual wiring bracket to the Door County 7-way wiring, I think it's still gonna be a great fit. That's probably just gonna be the main issue I have with this um, in terms of compatibility. I'm blessed to have another adapter on me that's very easy to adapt for this, but most of your extensions are gonna be about six feet long, so you're gonna to have to figure a way around that. But if you can solve that issue for your own personal situation, you have all those tail lights, you have that elevator lift, you have all those really, really cool features that you really might be interested in. So hopefully this video helped you out with deciding if this is the right fit for you and for your foreigner. And that was a look here at our Ceres Door County 2 bike electric bike rack right here on our 2015 Toyota 4Runner. My name is Evangeline and I hope you enjoy the journey.